Hello everyone, Colin Kinnett here for Woodwork Web. Today we're going to do some actual veneering and use the vacuum press. And we have some wood already set up and I've done some preparation ahead of time to try and make this video go a little bit quicker. Now what we're going to be veneering on as a base, as a core, is this MDF material. And if you look at this is what it was cut from, you can see there's a little bit of a sheen to it. I've actually gone ahead off camera and sanded this down because we want a little bit of a tooth on it uh, so that the glue will stick more readily. So I've pre-cut that and sanded it down and it's all ready to take the glue. Now these are the three sheets that we're going to be uh, veneering on top of the MDF and you can see they're they're separate so the very first thing we need to do is to glue these or, or attach these sheets together and what we use for that is a tape a veneering tape and it looks like butcher shop uh, tape uh, but this is in fact veneering tape and the reason we use this kind of tape is that you'll see when we start putting these together once this tape dries on here it actually has a tendency to pull the sheets together so that's why we use this kind of tape so we're going to go ahead now and start gluing these sheets together or at least uh, taping these sheets together no and I should mention too uh, ahead of time I have prepared the edges so that they actually sit nicely together and then it'll all be book matched now the way we attach the sheets together is we start off with a little bit of tape on about every uh, five or six inches uh, so I'll probably only put two of them on here and you go across ways you need to make sure that you get enough water on these and I've made this little stand here that that holds this uh, tape on here and this is just some cloth in here with a little bit of water it's a well that uh, keeps uh, keeps damp so that I can just dampen the, the the strips of tape as I go along and you just tape them like that and in a minute we're going to run some strips along up, right up and down the uh, the joints and you'll see that in a second here now this is particularly nice because we're doing something more than just a couple we're actually putting three of these together today so you get to see a little bit more of what uh, what you can do with veneering some some true veneering okay now those are all stuck together and the joints are good now the next thing we need to do, and I, I turn this because now if I pull this out I can actually do a rough measurement with this. I just find that's a little bit easier to put the glue on. So I just run that along, make sure I get a good amount of water on there because uh, you, you need that to stick very well. And sometimes I have to go back and re-wet parts of it and you start from the middle if you can and move out always move out make sure you don't get any wrinkles it's very important because wrinkles can telegraph through there's the first one you measure the next one and we just make that tape nice and wet There, now when that uh, dries, and this one up here will be, will actually be dry, I'll just take that and just trim that tape off there. Okay, so that's all ready to go. I'm just going to wait a moment for that to dry and uh, that's ready to go now the next thing we're going to be doing is we'll flip this over and we're going to be gluing this we're going to be gluing both sides of 
the MDF board and I've already prepared ahead of time uh, the backing material and you can see that I've already taped that up and it's ready to go. So that's the next thing we'll do is we'll start with the glue ups. Now for applying the glue I like to use this little mini roller. I think it does a, a real good job of giving a nice even coat of glue on the entire system. And I'll you know, I'm working on a workbench here, and I know you get glue on your workbench, but I try, I still like to put paper down because when you're working with multiple sheets like this, you don't want to get glue on the back side. So it's best, if you can, to work with a, sort of a fresh sheet every time. And I'm just applying glue to the entire back and and that's good. Now I'm just going to take that, move it off to the side, and now I'm going to bring on my MDF sheet, and I don't need that anymore. And I don't need paper underneath this because it's lifted up off the workbench high enough that I'm not going to get any glue down actually onto the work surface. So we just need to put a bit of glue on there. And this material will tend to soak up the glue a little bit more, so you might have to put a little bit more if you're using an MDF product as a veneering uh, core. Uh, they can tend to soak up a little bit more. There we go. And that's good. Now, we just take our first sheet lay it over top and you'll notice that it will stick out and I've done that on purpose I, I prefer to do that and then I like to, to roll it to make sure that there's no air in there and you need to make sure before you do anything that your surface underneath that your MDF surface is absolutely flat now you can see that this is sticking out all the way around and that's the way I wanted to do it. The next thing I need to do now, um, this surface needs to make, you need to make sure that there's no dirt here because this will telegraph through. If there's little bits of dirt or a little chip, it doesn't take much for it to telegraph through. So there's the back. And again, we don't need anything on it on the, on the uh, surface of the bench because we're well above it now and it only takes a few minutes to do this I'll we'll just take that, move that off to the side for a second and now we'll do the back and there's our back, that was with the tape on it so we're doing the back side of the back A lot of things you can do with veneering, it really opens up a whole new way of woodworking. You start thinking different ways, working with uh, different materials that you hadn't thought of before, uh, getting burls and things like that. Just drop that. There's our. Now, I'm going to, because the, the underneath grain is running this way, I'm going to put this on the opposite side. So it's actually going to sit like that. And normally I like to have it overlapping a little bit. This one's not quite right, uh, not quite overlapping, but because it's on the back and I'm going to be trimming it all, it doesn't really matter. Okay, now we just need to do that rolling a little bit just to make sure that it's nice and flat. And now, we're just going to put that inside the bag. Okay, here's our sheet going inside. We'll seal the end. Let's get that mesh all the way through there. We'll seal the end. This is a great, I don't know who invented this, but this is a great way of sealing these. And you just run that over the end. Oop. 
There, that's sealed. Now, on top of our bag, we actually have a valve, and we'll put that on there, and we'll turn on the vacuum press. And you'll see in a very short time that all of the air in here is going to get sucked out very quickly. In fact, you can actually see it now. There's, you can see how that's standing up right now. And that vacuum press will run for just a couple of minutes and then it will cut out. So our vacuum pump just quit now, just uh, turned itself off. It's, it's, it's reached the, um, the pressure, the preset pressure, uh, so it's just all cut out. And you can actually see that this is how flat this is. It's, there's, there's no bumps anywhere on it, and you can see in the reflection there. Um, now what's going to happen is the vacuum press will turn off. It'll cycle on and off. And I'm going to leave this in here for probably a couple of hours, and it'll the, the vacuum pump will cycle on and off every oh seven to ten minutes. It'll come on for a minute or so because just like your compressor that you use in your workshop for air nailing and things like that, um, it cycles on and off. This does the same thing. This vacuum press will do the same thing. So we'll come back in a couple of hours and uh, we'll open this up and have a look at our handiwork. So our vacuum press has been operating for a couple of hours or so. So I've just turned off the compressor uh, or the vacuum, uh, the vacuum pump and we're going to open this up now and have a look at, at our veneered strip. You can hear the, the suction going off. And there it is. And you can see, I, I actually haven't used this material before. Uh, this is uh, one, uh, one eighth uh, MDF. Uh, and it's very nice. Now one thing you will notice with some of these, the glue can actually ease through and that's why it's good to use the proper glue for this. Uh, and th in this case, um, it was pretty porous back and I can still feel there's a little bit of glue easing through and that's because of all the pressure. Uh, this side, uh, there is no glue coming through on this side, and again, that's because of the type of wood, uh, less porous uh, than this mahogany here. Now, the next thing we need to do uh, before we have a finished product is to take the tape off, and we simply do that by uh, wetting this down, and it'll just literally just peel off. And you can see that I've now taken all the tape off, still a little bit damp in areas that, uh, that the tape was on, uh, and you might be able to see a tiny bit of residue, and that's normal from the tape, because the next thing now is to sand this, uh, very light sanding, and give whatever kind of uh, surface preparation that you want uh, for whatever the, the, the finished product, the, the project that you're working on, however you're going to finish it. So, that's the, the back. Uh, and as I said, it's, uh, it's very nice and flat. I like it because it's still, there's still a little bit of flex to it. It's, it's not as thick as some of the uh, thicker veneers that I've been working with. So this is definitely a keeper. And now you've seen the entire process of how to veneer. Now off camera, I've taken the tape off both the front and the back. And you can usually do that just by dampening the, the veneer tape and, and it'll often just peel off. Uh, it might need a little bit of sanding or sometimes a little bit of scraping, but it'll come off pretty, pretty easily. Now the one thing you might notice on some of your veneering, uh, particularly if you're not using a good veneering glue, and if you're using a porous wood, uh, for example this mahogany that I used on the backing here, there's so much pressure with the vacuum press that it'll ease a little bit of the glue it'll right through the pores of the wood and you'll be able to feel that and that's pretty normal um, on this uh, walnut on this side of course it's a much tighter grain 
and because it's a, a veneer and glue, it doesn't come through the pores. So it's uh, just ready to sand or scrape or whatever you're going to do uh, for preparing it and then putting some sort of a finish on it. And that's veneering in uh, a few easy steps. Includes our series on veneering. We did the first part. We showed you the basics of how it works. This one we did a practical veneering job so you can actually see how veneering actually works. And then you can decide where you can best use this in your applications, in your projects. If you're new to this channel, we ask you to subscribe to our channel. We ask you to subscribe to Woodwork Web. We also suggest that you go to Woodwork Web because we always put associated articles with all of the, the videos that we make because often there's links and different things that we talk about in the videos that we can explain more uh, in the articles. So, I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.